I've been sick for two months. It's what's it, going on with that? It's the moss the moss event after three years of of pandemic and not being with people, then shaking every hand and smelling every breath that was in a place that was brought from all over the country. Whatever's inside my system has been there for two two months. You're a lingering cough away from being Greg Cody. But it's not yes, I'm I'm headed there. <laughs> so are you, by the way. I know. So are you and many of your in many of your many of your quirks. Many of your quirks. But uh I, I want to get to David Sampson here in a second. You still haven't gotten your taste back, correct? Like that Oh come on. You've had to get it back by now. You're assuming that your taste is now gone for good, yes? In clothing? In in food, in food, no, I have no taste. Oh it, it, so I, I shouldn't say none. There are occasional things that I taste now, but I don't like talking about it. I think we've talked about it too much, and there are studies being done. There are many people in my position, but there are many people in way worse positions from mm -hmm. long term COVID. I can still run. I have no issues. I'm not tired ever. I'm not, I don't sleep. Uh, so the only thing is that I still can't tell the difference in my jelly beans. What's the random taste? Not to you know dive into this, but like, what is the random taste that you're like, oh wait, I just tasted something? Uh, hot, spicy. Uh, and I'm beginning. I, I was able to taste onions a couple of weeks ago, and that made me happy. Well, let's let's talk about this for a second because I know you said you don't want to talk about it, and I'm assuming it's I because don't. because with COVID, people have suffered obviously great tragedies. This is an inconvenience, but I think people are curious about the inconvenience. So you you can finally taste onions. That that must give you hope. So no, I don't have hope because I still can't taste. I I have one threshold, and that's it. Can I differentiate my black jelly beans from my cinnamon jelly beans? That's all that matters. Is it because a you're a big test. you're a big jelly bean guy, or because that's sort of like the the defining test. line? It's such a test. good test. test. It's a spectrum test. The black jelly I bean is I eat candy awful. every day, and if and and they those jelly beans that I still eat every day, they taste exactly the same. And I can't tell you the pleasure I used to have in eating licorice jelly beans, and then having the cinnamon jelly beans worked in, and I would mix them with cotton candy jelly beans. And what I would do is I would put them in a mix and in one bag, and then I'd eat them while I'm watching my movies every day. And now that I put them in my mouth and they all taste like cardboard, but I still don't stop because I keep thinking the next bite, I'm going to taste it. You deserve this for liking black jelly beans. <laughs> don't say that. No one deserves I'm this. I'm just it's kidding. Horrific. All right, I'm kidding. It really it is was, horrific. It must be horrific, but you, you don't want to talk about it because, no. uh, because... So stop. All right. I'm sorry for saying that. I was right. joking. <laughs> Listen, no, the don't, I, I, don't I don't want to overplay it Howard. because people have lost family members. People are unable to do the athletic things they used to be able to do because their lungs are compromised. I'm completely healthy. It was over two years ago that I had COVID. It was inauguration day is when I got it. And uh, I lost taste and smell. And I thought that it would come back and it just never did. And it's been, it's horrific. I used to love sushi and I would eat it all the time. Now I can't stand it. It, it doesn't sit well with me because I can't tell the difference in what I'm eating. I can't taste good food, but I still go to good restaurants because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and uh, I thought I'd be healthier and eat all kale and juices, but I still eat pizza and cookies because I like the texture of it. <laughs> so A, I'm overweight and I'm annoyed at the fact that I can't enjoy what I used to enjoy and that I won't adjust my behavior to reflect my new reality, which just makes me weak. So now can we stop talking God, about that's it? That's ridiculous, though. You look at yourself and see overweight. And yes. I, I, the reason I don't want to stop talking about it is because I wonder how many people uh, think to themselves, which is worse, losing sense of smell or taste? Because we always talk about taste, but we don't we have not asked you one question about smell. My losing the sense of smell does not impact me at all. As a matter of fact, walking through New York City is a dream now. There I don't smell urine. I don't smell all the weed. I don't smell anything. Um, but let me tell you where it's a problem. In New York City, my doorman, and I'm sorry to look at me, Louie, that I have a doorman. My doorman is in my apartment. Don't play it. Don't play it. Damn it. Yeah, got rules around here, dude. Doorman. He has to be in my apartment because I always think that I smell gas. And if there's a gas leak that I don't know about, I'm supposed to have installed a light. And I've not done it because I don't want to embrace the fact that I have no smell. I wouldn't be able to smell fire or gas. And so I'm always calling my doorman to come up and say, do you smell something bad here? Here's the other thing. No more milk. No more dairy. 
because I can't smell whether it's spoiled. David, so here's the thing. You said you walked through New York and it's a dream now because you, you don't smell any of the bad smells of New York City. But I submit to you that the bad smells of New York all have a temperature with them. They always smell hot. It's never a cold, bad smell in New York. It's always, you feel... You think you could feel the smell? Absolutely. If I couldn't, if I lost my sense of smell, I would still know. I think he's right. Uh, he didn't, I have no idea what you're no, talking about. No, th I think he's absolutely right. A heat coming off the asphalt mm. in the garbage, wow. and it if you walk by it, it's a little warmer mm -hmm. and more disgusting. I think you could feel that even if you couldn't smell it. Uh, so uh, if you're talking about like walking over subway grates where you feel the, the, the hot breeze come over you... Yeah, you do, but it doesn't smell like crap. I love the I love that smell, by the way. The I'm telling you that the there are vents. great advantages to no smell because I wasn't exactly a, uh, oh, I wanted to sound so smart just now, the, a botanist, right? It didn't, I'm not a chef. There are chefs who have lost their taste and smell and have lost their ability to make a living. So just so we're clear that there are cases where it's very serious what I'm going through. In my case, it is not. I, I make a living with my mouth. If I lost my vocal cords with COVID, that would have been an issue, obviously. But not being able to smell roses, it, right? It doesn't matter. Oh, I don't but, have flowers. Oh, doesn't but matter. David, I think one of the things you're saying there that's fascinating is, and an unintended, I would have never guessed, that you live with a larger daily fear of something. And that doorman call must be, like, not just annoying, a bit of a suffering reminding you that your paranoia is always there. You always think there's a gas leak. So I think that now you're getting a little deeper into my personality um, where there's there's a level of anxiety that exists where I'm thinking about all possible things that could be going wrong at all times because the sky is most definitely falling. And it's not that I'm a pessimist. It's actually I'm an optimist that I know the sky's falling so I can prepare for it. So I have a checklist of things that I go through. I'm the guy who checks every door, every window to make sure everything's locked. I just, I have a, a, I really do have a plan before I go to bed every night or before I retire to my bedroom of different things that I have to make sure I see. And if I don't remember seeing them, I'll go back and do it again. And I'll do it in an order to make sure I don't miss. One of the things is to make sure everything in the kitchen is off, to make sure the burners are off, to make sure the refrigerator's closed, to make sure the dishwasher is done through, going through its cycle, that the laundry and, and washer and dryer are not on because you don't want to go to bed with those things on. So I go through my checklist like a pilot flying a plane, but I recognize now that there's certain things that I could be wrong about. And so it requires me to double check and triple check, and then I start playing games with myself, and then I call my doorman. All it's right, not David. great. All right, David, you clearly did not want to do therapy for the last eight minutes. Let's move on to things going on into the world of sports. I, I really found funny, and, and Chris Cody pointed this out to me uh, before we started recording, that the reaction to the Tom Brady retirement announcement has been hilarious <laughs> because every Chiron requires couching. They're terrified. It says, like, Tom Brady retires for now. Tom Brady says, quote, he's, retiring says he's retiring for good. Like, like, ev like every... Everything needs a qualifier because nobody believes him. I, I nobody thought, believes I him. Thought, we don't believe that this is I, over. I really thought, David, that Metal Arc Media distinguished itself yesterday with what I believe to be the worst real-time news reaction to a major story in the history of media because he retires and the reaction of everyone in the room. I mean, this is a great, great player, important in sports, was don't believe him, liar, don't trust him. And it seems like we were out in front with that coverage because it <laughs> seems like that's what everyone's reaction is. Yeah, so it happened while I was live. So nothing personal is done live on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. On, uh, on our YouTube channel. And it happened, Coco got in my ear, the producer, to say Tom Brady just retired. And he gave me the video and we played the video of his Twitter right on the show. My first reaction is that he's so full of it, not that he's going to come back, but that he woke up, saw the sunrise and said, all right, I'm just going to do the video and I'm retiring now. And then he's trying to double down by saying, I called the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 6 a.m. to tell them. What, what do they have their phones not on vibrate? He happened to reach people right at 6 a.m. There is no chance that, that happened. But I will say it is for good. He looked at his past season. He looked at his team. He realized that, he just can't do it. And so good for him for starting his Fox deal. But don't give me the BS that he's doing to spend more time with his family. No retired player retires because they want to spend more time with their family. But 
you can very easily make an argument that the the struggles that he had last season were because he was playing on a bad team. That team was bad. If you actually isolate his individual performance, which some websites attempt to do, his individual performance wasn't terrible. And the thought was, well, he can go to San Francisco or he can go to this place or that place that could actually accentuate his skill set and he can maybe keep going. And I always thought that his thing was defying age and that he was going to keep going and going and he still performed at a reasonably high level this year. And that, and that's why I think nobody believes him is because people think he's going to keep doing that. I bet you right here now, and you can replay the tape at some point, Tom Brady will never wear a National Football League uniform again, ever. He is going to take his soft landing, his pillow job, his puffy job replacing Greg Olson, and he is done because he recognizes that the opportunity for him to keep winning, no matter what system he's in, has diminished to the point where the juice is not worth the squeeze. And the juice for him is only adding Super Bowls, and the squeeze Boy, what is was getting that sound, hit. Roy. What <laughs> was that sound? Ah, uh, squeezing the juice. <laughs> He's right. I do love a good squeezing <laughs> <of> juice. <laughs> <laughs> You're off mic, longing for juice or squeeze. He juice? didn't even like know that Winnie's mic was I on. That was just on. Roy. I knew it was on. No, I don't know. Just longing for juice squeeze. Uh, it's, an overused, the juice. it's an overused expression. Oh, oh, not yes, enough. enough. It's not overused. I could say the view is worth the climb, but the reason I use juice squeeze in this case is because he spent his entire season trying not to get squozen. And oh, so okay. when you're analyzing his ability to do his job, if you're not willing to get hurt and you play not to get hurt, that's actually when it's the most dangerous. Well, what, in football. Are you do what, what are you doing there? Hold on a second. You're saying he's retiring because he doesn't want to be hit anymore. I'm saying he's retiring because he doesn't want to be hit anymore and recognizes that when you're not willing to be hit, then you're not going to well, be effective and your ability to win a Super Bowl goes to zero me, and there's no other reason to play when you've got a $37 million a year job waiting for okay, you. Okay, but let, let's let not be cynical for a moment because I really did think the coverage, ours, chief among them, really bad yesterday. What? Of a pretty seminal thing, if it is indeed so, that the athlete of our times the Michael Jordan, the new Michael Jordan for this era, the guy that only guy you'd put above LeBron and Serena for what this generation has seen. He retires, and it couldn't be a celebration because we already did that last year. When he didn't mean to retire, mm -hmm. the whole thing was botched. Mm -hmm. The Dolphins end up not getting him, and boy, he would have looked good with Tyreek Hill. Oh, only because of the water. Flores lawsuit, by the way. It, it, Jane, I want you to imagine him in that offense this year, because oh. this is the move he was trying to make a year ago, and it cost him his marriage. But David, you can't say individual measurements in that sport. You cannot say he was bad last year. He could still play the position, clearly and obviously. And if I give him all the 49ers weapons, I bet you he looks good. I do not believe that it's because he thinks he can't play or doesn't want to be hit anymore. I believe it's because the last year was really hard, and at the end of it, he's really drained. And it if you ask people right now when they're hurting at the end of a season, Aaron Rodgers sounded broken when his season was done. This guy's only won his entire career. I think he's totally, totally done, uh, and I don't think he'll be back. But also, he'll be <laughs> Wait, 46 so what are you saying, next Dan? year. Are you saying that he's coming back or he's not coming back? I don't believe that he is coming back. I don't believe we will ever see him play again. Uh, That's all I said. Uh, I know you said that, but the but group you're, you're, doesn't you're believe saying that. for different reasons, though. Like, Dan, you're saying because last year was hard, like, in every respect, not just in the football respect, whereas I think David is saying it's because of the hits he's going to incur. And by the way, I, I agree with a portion of that, David, because you did see him escape at every possible opportunity from getting hit and and not stand in there and, and take the punishment. His sack total was fairly low this year, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that he did not want to get hit. But And they changed the rules to make it so even touching him would be a penalty, by the way. But can we go back to the family thing, Chris? Are we suggesting in any way that he got divorced because he played an extra year with Tampa? I think a lot. I think a lot of people have made that leap. A lot of people have said huh. he was sort of, oh, he was married to the job. He wouldn't give it up when when Giselle wanted him to give it up four years ago. And this has been a long tension in their marriage. And finally, it led. What to are the you end laughing at, David? I'm laughing. It's so ridiculous. She didn't want him to give it up. Be home, Tom. Drive our kids to school. Be the present father that you always dreamt you'd be. What she was really saying is. I don't want you anywhere near me. Their marriage had nothing to do with him playing an extra year. Marriages don't break up because someone stays at a job for one extra year. 
their marriage breaks up like other marriages break up because they can't stand each other anymore. That's it. And they're better off and they're happier with somebody else or with nobody else, but just not the person they're married to. It has nothing to do with the fact that anything happened with Tampa or New England, or was he going to be back? Was he not going to be back? Giselle angry. So she leaves him for her yoga instructor because he's playing another year. Give me <laughs> reportedly, a allegedly, allegedly, allegedly rumored by the Internet. We don't Whatever. know that's true. We're all speculating, though, David. You're acting like you know that that's true. I mean, I, I know I'm with how you. People, I know sense. why people get divorced. Yeah, I mean, it, does <laughs> make sense. it had to be something bigger than just football, but football could have been a factor. Everything's a factor when you can't stand the person you're married to. You don't like the way they brush their teeth anymore. <laughs> Giselle uh, got into his Instagram comments and just said, wishing you only wonderful things in this new chapter in your oh, life. And a whole lot of people saw that your as a wet fish in his face. Like that was, and I just read it as like, well, that's nice. They're, she's sending a lovely comment but to her ex-husband. Like, don't, don't think you're coming back because you did this finally after after all of our conversations about it. You're distance i think it's Over because there. they were they will they will forever be bonded because they have children he still has to hang out and talk to bridget moynihan it's what you do when you get divorced and have children no matter what you are inextricably aligned with the mother of your child or the father of your child or children when there is a divorce no matter what unless you're a piece of shit and you just abandon your family altogether david i got a question for you because you know tom brady you know, if we're to assume that he's leaving because just the stress of doing this is just, even though he's still good at it, it's just too much work to be able to do it. If Jeffrey Loria had never sold the Marlins, how long do you think you would have been working? Would you still be working right now? Or would you have, would you have burnt out and said, enough of this? I, I don't want to do this anymore. No, I probably would still, <clears throat> unless he had fired me, I would still be working there. Uh I believe that I did enough for him year in and year out to take care of his money and his business that he would not have fired me. Uh, but so I, I think I still would have been there. I only knew that I didn't want to go back once I was gone. But what I didn't tell you about is the year or two after I got left baseball, how much I missed it, how much I had to redefine myself because I was so defined by being the president of a major league baseball team, it overtook my life. It, it was who I was. I was able to do anything whenever I wanted, however I wanted to do it. Uh, it's an unbelievable thing that feeds an ego to have that position. And I never really thought about it until it was gone. I just assumed that this is how people would treat me. And I assumed that the people around me were around me because they liked me and wanted to be around me. And then when you're out of the limelight and you're out of that job and everyone disappears and your Rolodex gets, God, that's an old reference. When your <laughs> phone contact list becomes full of names of people you used to be able to reach and now don't return your calls or texts or reach out to you on your birthday, that's a very tough adjustment. And so what I did is I said, I don't want my ego to go to zero. So is there any way I can get paid to do something with cameras really? and red lights and microphones? That's not that's not the real reason. Come on. That's not the real reason. No, no, that is. Really? Well, I would also say that you have a bit of a performer in you, uh, whether it was as baseball president who got everything in that stadium built or, you know, person who's dancing on stage uh, doing what it is that we do. Like you, uh, that's how that happened. You realized that your friends weren't your friends and that baseball was who you were. And as soon as you left baseball, you were worthless, correct? That's exact that that you're just restating what I said. I guess I wasn't clear enough. So, so, That's exactly what happened. So I wanted to get my self worth back and I couldn't find a way to do it um, uh, amongst a crumbling marriage and a complete craziness going on with family sickness, et cetera, et cetera. I had to find a way to feed or to try to hang on to what I thought would define me. And that's how I got onto the media side on more of a full-time basis. But I didn't start nothing personal until over a year later in October of 19. And that's when I really started feeding the ego beast. So, so David, I know you've talked about in the past several times where Jeffrey was either about to fire you or did fire you and then changed his mind. In any of those moments, did you ever think to yourself, well, I'm gonna need a new job? It's funny you say that. I am, uh, and I, when I give speeches to kids or to students, I tell them this if you're worrying about your next job while you're in your current job, you're going to need your next job sooner than you think. And so I did a lot of different things before baseball, from business to Wall Street to various things. And uh, 
I never worried about what was next because I didn't want to lose focus on what I was doing now. And I always loved what I was doing now. I was always proud of what I was doing now, but I still had the same anxiety. My life used to be defined by wearing Morgan Stanley shirts. I would wear in the wow. late 90s, I worked at Morgan Stanley and I carried the Morgan Stanley bag. I wore the Morgan Stanley shirts. I hated people from Goldman Sachs. And when I left Morgan Stanley, I thought, how am I now going to be, how do I, what's my self-worth? How do I define it? And then I got to the next thing. So I always love what I'm doing, but the anxiety of <laughs> change. What, is, what change, does Amin laughing about? Is Amin, Amin is laughing because he's, uh, put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Are you terribly sad for the man whose life is defined by Morgan Stanley shirts? That's what you were laughing pretty at. Pretty much, man. That's what I you mean, were But why, why does that make you laugh? If I'm proud of what I'm doing, whatever I'm doing currently makes me proud. I think that's what I want people to feel. Yeah, it's working for a big financial firm in New York, and you you you've joined that team, and you hate all the other teams in New York, did, right? Did, did you cheer when Lehman Brothers went down? They're like, yeah, that's right. You, you go I down. had a lot of good friends at Lehman Brothers, oh, and man. and say what you want about that situation. When you walk in to work one day, and let me just tell you what it would be like if you walking in to Metalark one day and the cameras are off and the microphones don't work. And it's not that there's people there to say goodbye, we love you. There is nobody there to say anything except there's security telling you to leave your ID and walk out. You don't get your computer, you don't get any of your notes, you don't get anything. And you're worried that all of the money you have in stock options that you had saved up could just be gone. So I would not make fun of anything that happened when a company goes bankrupt. So, but you just said you hated Goldman Sachs. I hated them. I feel like Frankie would let me get my stuff. He would not. I would. I mean, I'm assuming. That, I'm assuming that <laughs> there either, would no, no chance. I have either gone bankrupt or Stugatz has been, you know, raided by the FBI in some sort of. Felony. I feel like Frankie. Just let me get my <laughs> backpack, please. I, I, I know we don't have much security here, but I think if the, the scenario that he's describing, where Stugatz has run off with all of our money. And we come in here. I, that could happen to me. I could come in here and Frankie wouldn't let me in here. <laughs> let me just you get in You have no idea. You'd be done. That'd be it. Let me just but, get in the J drive and get that Look, one naked Chris It's my name Chris on the wall. It's my picture. And they would say, I don't care. Turn around. <laughs> You're done here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this real quick. What is the one thing you'd come back for? Because uh, Chris Whittingham just said that it would be a naked Chris segment. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just, that he'd go, just let me go back in and get, get a single I, thing. I, I need to get that for my reel. Roy, you have the best database we've got around here in your head. What one thing would you come back in here? To, one to, last top ten. <laughs> I gotta do it. Oh, oh you come time. in and do something. You yeah. come in no, and you can't do anything. The yeah, mic drop no, them no, off. You, the cameras you're, are you're off. You're getting one keepsake, one audio no, file. No, Roy is coming in here and performing to no for nobody. A top ten in an empty room as Bob the engineer shuffles by and grabs his last duffel bag. Oh, uh, one of the fake songs. <laughs> one of the fake songs. I think the the one with Kenny Loggins from uh, Top Gun. <laughs> that one. I need Stu. Where are you getting it from, yeah. Roy? Oh, I'm getting from from our database. I'm grabbing that no, file. No I'm access. emailing it to myself. No access. Nope. I'm with Lewis nope. on this. Email right. shut off. Come on. Can you guys you gotta get me take that a Kenny physical Logan thing song? from the studio? Take all our right, line no. to the end no, I, zone. All right, get me the song. I didn't want a reenactment from you. <laughs> That's the name of the song. I mean, go find it. <laughs> no, what do you mean? Go find it. You go find it. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> You gotta get up physically to go find it. <laughs> Time now for Amin's top five smells he would miss. Are we ready with fanfare or are we searching for that song? I don't wanna. We'll do both. Okay. All right. So, OLI, popcorn at the movie theater. Good answer. Good answer. Great show. Yeah. That is you walk great in show. the movie good theater. One. That's OLI. That's a, that's good, OLI, that's a yeah. good list, man. Number five. My own farts. Oh no! Oh no! It's my own farts. Oh. Man. <laughs> no, it's your own brand. You are too I honest. Can't even. You are too honest, sir. I'd miss it. I'd, you know, little Dutch <laughs> oven action in the morning. Number four, an ocean breeze. What do ocean breezes smell like? I I feel like well I don't know uh, David I don't know how to describe it but I feel like everyone here is probably like ruined and you know spoiled. But because I don't live near an ocean, every time I come here, I get that whiff of the ocean. It just makes me feel good. Like, oh, yeah, everything is right in the Bit world. Bit of salt. 
pure air, yeah. blue oh, sky. But, uh, but David, Brian. are you so hardened by living by beaches that you don't understand what he's talking about? That if you live inland and you arrive at some place that's swampier, you can smell it? I lived in plantation. So I don't, I, I, I don't, I actually, if you asked me to choose a smell, like in a smell test, mm -hmm. I would not be able to smell an ocean breeze. Real, even before you're... Correct. You're, wow. Put I it, can't picture it. Put it I on the poll, I can picture your Juju. farts, but I can't picture an ocean breeze. Put it on the poll, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Can you smell an ocean breeze? Number three. Number three. Subway vent air. No way. This is uh, unbelievable. So, okay, so this, this is unbelievable. So this is New Yorkers uh, have such Stockholm syndrome. It's crazy. You don't deserve gross. your smell. Look, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. It reminds me of my childhood. Like it reminds me of being in New York as a kid and going to the playground and go play basketball. When you're walking on the way there, you get a whiff of that mechanical diesel fume. I'm like, oh man, I don't even know. It, it's yeah, it's electric. There's no, there's no use any gas anyway. But I just <laughs> love that smell. It just it takes me back to being like 12 years old. Samson, 13. you remember the smell he is talking about? You grew up in and around New York. It is not yes. a pleasant smell. It's not even smell your own farts pleasant. It's an unpleasant smell he's talking about. So let me tell you that where how I grew up, uh, I was not allowed to walk on subway grates because I was told by my mother yeah. that if you walk over a subway grate, it can fall through. Yep. So I've never to this day walk over a subway grate. So I actually, I know the smell of the subway from when I had smell, but it smells like terrible body odor and urine. Oh, no. It doesn't smell like diesel fuel. Not, but not no, that. I never walked on a subway grate. Yeah, not 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 the smell of the s subway of like all the people. I'm talking about the actual. No, train. but you think people will agree with you no. on this? You think people? The, you're talking about the smell that comes through the grid mm -hmm. when the train comes through. Mm -hmm. That is all oh. the smells of the subway. Or when you're waiting for the train and you're like, oh, where is this train? And then all of a sudden you get that. Like it hits you like, oh, there's air coming. What's happening? And then you see that light in the distance. This is a, back in the days before we had those fancy electronic boards that say, oh, the next train is an uptown train. It's coming in two minutes. Shut up. All these Do people. Do you ignore the yellow line, I mean? What's up? Were you the guy who leaned over to look left yes. for the two oncoming headlights? Yes. I Oh, I would love seeing it come up above the horizon of the tracks. You just see all of a sudden that glow. How like, far oh, do you oh. lean over? What degree would your body mm. be at to look for I the would train. say if zero is me standing straight up and down, Which it is. I would say 30 degrees probably. Oh, Maybe. that's not a big lean. Yeah. I don't, I, at my size, the reason I didn't do it is I had to be close to 80 degrees in order to see. <laughs> and to me, that was <laughs> the juice not worth the score. Again, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> go ahead, Roy. Roy, off mic. Look at how happy he is. Number two. Fresh pizza out of the oven of a pizzeria. That's a good smell. You're walking yeah. down the street and they just got a pie out that it's a mixture of the cheese, the sauce, but also fresh baked bread. I was going to go fre fresh baked goods in general. Bakeries, just bakeries. bakeries. Yeah, bakeries. Wonderful. Fresh great baked smells. bread. But yeah. the pizza, oh, that's that one's above all the others. And then number it's one. killing me. When it's about to rain. <laughs> like. You don't see like you don't see anything. It's not like it's dripping. That's but tremendous. You smell you're like oh, I think it's gonna it's, rain it's today. A, it's a, oh. And you're right. It cleans it, it, out your it, sinuses. It's human instinct. But that's human like just, instinct working. That's kind of just like a freshness. I almost feel like David might be able to still smell that because it's not actually no, a it's smell. A, it's a smell. It's just kind of like a breeze. It's a to feel. It's a smell, Chris. I'll tell you why, man. Because again. When I smell it, it takes me back to my childhood, but it takes me back to my childhood in Sudan. I It makes me think of Sudan when that smell hits because it's such an unmistakable order. When people say that scents are the closest thing tied to memory, I, I, that's what I think of instantly. Does rain smell the same in Sudan as it does in Miami? No, it doesn't, but it's similar enough that that's the... The kind of place where my I mind like goes. I like what Witty is saying there though. What the the you put it number one the smell of your own instinct. <laughs> uh, how about the uh, wood smoke from a barbecue? Uh, I I like it, but then it confuses me sometimes because then I'm wondering, is there a fire? <laughs> like, my, my, my senses are like, wait, 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 is this a drill or are we just is something happening here? So Samson would be at that barbecue and not be able to smell either the barbecue or the flames that are engulfing his home. It's happened. Now I can see smoke. <laughs> I can see smoke. You're you're laughing, Roy, at an inappropriate time because the man is sensitive about this. It's it's sensitive subject matter for him. 
And I You're don't, still smiling, Roy. I don't think I'm, he I'm, thinks I'm it's funny. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I think no, that no. Roy is laughing at the thought of me not having the pleasure of these senses because it in some way makes up for, you know, all the <laughs> Roy, it's privilege weird. and everything else. Right. Stop smiling for 30 Roy, seconds. Roy, I'm Roy you're so it well trained really and not strange. smiling. Roy, it's really strange what is happening I'm, right now. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing Roy, at myself so now. so nice to you and your family. Why <laughs> yeah, are you, you so have, mean? I, I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, you a drink. Hey, Just a stop smiling and it all stops, I'm Roy. I'm trying to. Roy, Roy. You're so good at it. Roy, what you have I heard you the first time. Roy, what you have done to this man is offensive, okay? I know I have instigated it, but he is sensitive about this, and you are apologizing, and you got a giant smile on your face about the man not being able to smell or taste anything for two years. Stop smiling. Stop. Can we talk about Pamela Anderson soon? <laughs> no, I'm smiling yeah, again. David, what are you reviewing this week? Thank you, Chris. There's a new documentary called Pamela, A True Love Story. It just dropped on Netflix. It's an hour and 50 minutes. And it's her and her two boys. Missing from the documentary is Tommy Lee Jones. And uh, strike that. I think it's just Tommy, Tommy Lee. Lee. Just Jones. Tommy Lee. Just Tommy Lee. Well, by the way, they're both not, missing from the it's totally it's totally 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 <laughs> Just to be clear. There would be some relationship. <laughs> I don't care. Hello, baby. <laughs> both Tommy <laughs> Lee house, and Tommy house, Lee Jones house. are not there. <laughs> it's a totally However, different movie. Tommy she Lee is Jones. naked the overwhelming majority of the documentary. And it was an ill factor because she is showing her sons all of these sex tapes and the Playboy shots, and it's all part of this documentary. And what we're meant to do is say, wow, what a horrible break it was with what happened when Seth Rogen stole the sex tape out of the vault. <laughs> Seth Rogen. <laughs> and so the documentary tries to paint her in a sympathetic picture, and it ends with her with a victory having been cast and performing in Chicago on Broadway. I found it to be incredibly compelling because it's not the Li Lily James, Sebastian Stan. It is what happens to the real person when you allow yourself, sometimes purposefully, to be the subject of such intense scrutiny that you don't have a chance. And what we didn't see deeply enough is how affected her kids are. Be one of her kids said, can you imagine having the two craziest parents in the entire world, which at the time were Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee, the, the drummer of Motley Crue, and it is bizarre living in that world. And she gives you some insight into it through diaries that she was writing at the time. And it turns out that no matter how hot you are, no matter how rich and how famous you are, the concept of loneliness and the concept of insecurity is still very much alive in everybody. And it was very much alive in her. And these were actual diary entries. And you and we see them on this documentary. I loved it. it it's better than what we just saw with Seth Rogen. Really? It gives you, it, yeah, it really is. Because it gives you an idea of what's real and what's not and the impact that we don't think about when we're talking about paparazzi and talking about, oh my God, look at how hot she is. And you don't realize that, that we're objectifying someone. And I'm not trying to say, I don't want to think those things anymore. I'm trying to say there is a issue that I never considered, which is that that level of fame the juice is no longer worth the squeeze. Oh, that's <laughs> my man. Yeah. Yes, look at you. You should not have rewarded his smiling throughout that segment. I'm smiling again. I am going to tell the audience, uh, this, this person writes in, David, I don't miss an episode of hashtag nothing personal. Uh, the audience should know that nothing personal is really strong. He does it every day, and uh, he tackles a lot of stuff that most people in the sports media are not tackling. So I urge you to find nothing personal. However, this person continues. Love Samson on Lebitard. Love his talks with Skipper. Wait to see. Love it all. But? But he has the worst movie reviews ever if he loves a movie i know to leave it alone if he thinks it's cringe give it to me hashtag you people is lol funny uh you people was not funny at all did anyone else see you people i in saw this group? it i agree with you it was not funny it was really heavy-handed yeah it was like the most satirical 
version of how people talk to each other now. It was like Julia Louis Dreyfus, like uh, she, the There's way no she was like talking her. to a black woman, it was just like, look at your name. I mean, I know that people can be tone deaf, and I, that's what they were trying to say, but it was just, it was really heavy handed for me. Wow, Chris Cody's movie reviews can yeah. also. Be I said found. that on Cinephile earlier. We got, we got this a week. lot of people. We got a lot of people here who know movies. We got Amin. Who among you would claim to know the most about movies if it's between Amin, Adnan, and Samson? Oh, I would say Adnan. Like, I'm, like if why, we're why? About, because His movie reviews are called from other people's reviews. Well, no, because Adnan watches a ton of movies. One, I know you watch a movie a day, David, but Adnan watches an insane amount of movies. But two. I mean, Adnan hosted the Oscars uh, digital show, like live from the Oscars. I, I, that's a level of kind of credential. I don't think either of us can uh, begin to. Approach. So does Ryan Seacrest. No, cares. But, but that's not, but Ryan Seacrest isn't hosting. You're claiming Samson that you know more than Adnan does. That you're you're claiming that when you say no more, it doesn't. It means that I would value my opinion of a movie more than I would value Adnan's. I'm not saying that I know more movie trivia or I've watched more movies in my lifetime or can tell you anything. I anything other than when I watch a movie, I have a good idea of what is well done and what hits the mark versus what misses. But 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 David, I think everyone would say that about themselves, right? I know what movies I like better than any anyone in the world but if you're saying if Dan's saying who knows movies like Adnan has the recall of oh it's like the 1962 uh, Academy, Adnan would win a trivia Academy contest movie, you know? he would win a trivia contest that's not yes. what Samson is saying but it's, it's though more, but it's more than trivia that's it's, more objective though it's, it's like what he, Samson's talking yeah. about is just opinion but also it's to me it's more than trivia it's things like when you watch a movie, you say, oh, you see the way they shot it like this? It's actually an homage to this movie that this director, who was this guy's favorite director, like that stuff isn't trivia. That's understanding kind of the filmmaking process in a way that, again, is is I, I don't have the catalog or history of knowledge of movies to be able to do something like that. And so, I think he's getting that from Chad GPT. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say... Would you be able to compare yourself to a Roger Ebert? So who would make that comparison? Would it be David Sampson or would it be Adnan? I wouldn't include you in this. Uh, I mean, uh, for the good, for the bad ones, I would. Uh, yeah, for yeah the bad there's ones. nobody in the history of time who's reviewed bad movies better than Amino Aston. That is true. Own me. Quite a niche there, I mean. Thank you. You're really doing something for the <laughs> he's, world. He's digging while everyone else is zagging. Anyone can review good movies. Exactly. 30 years ago, if you want a, a movie that was rated <laughs> below 40, that's the Amin Wheelhouse. Movies. I'm your guy. <laughs> Is he Give me all your crap. You're tired and poor, and I'll review them all. But hold on a second, though, because if Adnan, what, what David is saying is he's got, David, I think, is claiming. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> yes, you will. You, uh, you're claiming that you have a better eye for the art than Adnan does, that your taste is better. This doesn't sound personal at all. Nothing personal. I have nothing, but I love Adnan. Yeah, you really demonstrate that every time you talk I, about Adnan. I love yeah, Adnan. I, know, I, mean, I just wish I had the movie I mean, podcast at Metal Ark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, listen. I mean, David, you, if you don't think that that's what this just gives off, like, you just don't hear yourself. I am very happy that Adnan has the movie podcast at Metal Ark. But why did you laugh? What what did you you get? You were disgusted there, and you laughed. Don't get me started on what I'd like to get you started. I don't think you do. We're we're at minute forty two. And by the way, what happened to you producing the segment? <laughs> How did that go? Thank you, David. <laughs> How about Mama Bear, Chris Cody? Just yeah, ah. man, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Hey Roy, congrats again. People don't give spectators enough credit. It's the hard, it's almost as hard as doing the race. Yeah. I would say it's uh, much well, easier than oh, doing the race. What? What? Well, no, yeah, it's, it's not. much easier than <laughs> spectators. Well, you know what? It's difficult doing it with a child. <laughs> and, 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 and Everything's it. more difficult with a child. You're goddamn right it is. I'm exhausted. All right. Have a great day. <laughs> See everybody. you, David. See you, Dave. See ya. <laughs>